Getting into the Pokemon trading card game is easier than ever before, but with dozens of products, multiple formats, and thousands of cards to choose from, where do you start? If you're building on a budget, then there's always the trusty theme deck. With a bit of cash and a lot of creativity, you can build something bold and battle ready. You're watching Deck Boss. Hi everyone, and welcome to Deck Boss, the show where we take classic theme decks and give them a competitive tune-up. This week, we're going to try and supercharge the Mock Strike theme deck from Ultra Prism. Mock Strike is an intriguing theme deck which spawned a rogue archetype that was more popular on YouTube than on the competitive scene. Headed by a hard-hitting deck boss, Mock Strike features a surprisingly consistent strategy backed up by a solid list of cards. It's also one of the most thematically appropriate theme decks ever made. Now, let's crack this open and meet our deck boss. The Mock Strike theme deck is built around Garchomp. This raging land shark dragon thing is a stage 2 Pokemon with two attacks. Its first attack, Quick Dive, costs two colorless energy and lets you do 50 damage to any opposing Pokemon. Its second attack, Royal Blades, costs 1 fighting and 2 colorless energy, and does 100 damage base plus 100 more if you played the supporter card Cynthia during your turn. As far as deck bosses go, Garchomp is a fierce but challenging pick. It has decent HP for a stage 2, can retreat for free, and has high potential damage output. But there are some significant drawbacks here too. Garchomp is a stage 2, so it's slow to play, its best attack is a bit expensive, and its damage output is reliant on playing a specific supporter every turn. To really make it work, we need to find ways of consistently establishing Garchomps on the field, cheating its attack costs a little, and more importantly, find ways to play Cynthia every turn that we're going to attack. Those are not insignificant challenges, but if we can overcome them, then Garchomp can do some devastating damage. Now let's jump back over to the theme deck and see what it gives us to work with. Mock Strike is definitely one of the more well thought out theme decks. In particular, the inclusion of this Lucario is a brilliant stroke. Its Precognitive Aura ability allows you to search your deck for any card once per turn as long as you have a Garchomp in play. This creates some serious consistency, critically allowing you to fetch a Cynthia every turn. You also get this fun little Spiritomb with two very nice and cheap attacks. The first one lets you return two supporters from your discard pile to the deck, and the other stuns basic Pokémon for a turn. It's nice, but a bit slow. Your good draw supporters consist of Cynthia, obviously, and Professor Kakui. It's a pretty tight package, but understandable when the whole idea is to only use Cynthia. Your Pokéball package consists of Nest Ball and Timer Ball, which is fine, for the most part. Recovery is decent here too, with the inclusion of Rescue Stretcher and Pal Pad. Pal Pad in particular is very important because it's another way of returning Cynthia's to the deck to use for Garchomp's attack later on. And finally, you have some very nice switching options in Escape Rope and Escape Board, which is a nice upgrade over the standard pair of Switch cards. As for the rest, don't worry about it. I see where the designers were going with this deck, and it definitely deserves its status as a darling rogue deck. In particular, the core of the deck is very well conceived thematically and tactically in supporting the deck boss. Now, as usual, I'd recommend grabbing two of these if you can, especially since you need the playset of Cynthia's to really get anything done. But hey, singles are a thing, so you do you. And now that we've got the basics, let's jump on over to PTCGO to see how we can make this deck work. Alright, so after a bit of testing, I finally found a list that stays pretty faithful to the original theme deck, while accentuating the consistency of the Garchomp Lucario engine. Mostly, the deck is built to cheat out Garchomps quickly and offset its fairly expensive attack costs. The deck can actually turbo through itself fairly quickly, which makes getting the cards you need a pretty simple affair in the late game. I decided to keep the Lucario line to a 2-2 split because it's only useful once Garchomp is set up, so a higher count would just lead to dead cards more often than not. Having two means that it's usually there when I need it, and out of sight otherwise. There's three Jirachi to pair with the escape board included in the deck. Jirachi is your ideal starter, and in the early game, it's there to get you ball search and rare candies. 
In the mid game, once you've set up and thinned your deck a bit, it can usually help you dig for Cynthia or other combo pieces. I've also included one copy of Machamp and Marshadow Tag Team GX because it's highly likely that you're going to lose a baby Pokemon in the early game, and this gives you access to a cheap 120 damage attack in Revenge. It's also a fighting type, which pairs well with Martial Arts Dojo, allowing you to steal KOs against a number of multi-prizers, or soften up bigger targets for Garchomp. Onto the trainer lineup, bumping up Cynthia to a 4 count is pretty obvious, and thanks to Lucario, in the mid to late game you don't have to worry about shuffling away good hands because you can always retrieve a key card after using Cynthia. And trust me, this deck thins pretty aggressively, so you're usually getting a solid 6 cards off of your Cynthia every time. Lily is our only other draw supporter, and for good reason. You often need to play down your hand aggressively in the early game, and you have too many pieces that can't be discarded, so this is preferable to something like Professor's Research. And again, you want to be playing Cynthia most of the time, so it's best to just use these early on, get them out of the way, so that you can go to making your power plays with Cynthia and Garchomp later on. Guzma is there at 2, mostly to get stuff out of the active, but it can also let you get a non-boosted hit into something that can't KO Garchomp, setting up a KO for the next turn. Also, if Machamp and Marshadow get stuck in the active, then this is your go-to as well. Rare Candy lets us cheat out Garchomp pretty quickly, and thanks to Lucario, it becomes extremely accessible in the mid to late game, which helps smooth over the usual consistency issues with Stage 2 decks. Martial Arts Dojo gives Garchomp a bit of extra oomph, but only when it has fighting energy attached, and only when you're behind on prizes. Again, you'll probably lose a Gibble or a Jirachi early on, so this will typically be live right away. It can let Garchomp hit for 240 damage after using Cynthia, which is crazy, but it's important to note that you don't get the boost if you use a Karate Belt to help pay for Royal Blades, so keep that in mind. Speaking of Karate Belt, this lets your Garchomp or Machamp and Marshadow get rolling a bit quicker. Royal Blades in particular is very expensive, but if you happen to fall behind early on, this lets you attack for just one attachment of a DCE. And while you won't get the Martial Arts Dojo bonus while using this, hitting for 200 damage for a single attachment is still fantastic. It also lets our tag team use Revenge for one colorless energy, which is great for starting a comeback. Palpad lets you recover Cynthia, and at a 2 count here, it essentially gives you 8 fully powered Royal Blades, which should be enough to clear 6 prizes. It also pairs nicely with Lucario because you can recover your copies of Cynthia to the deck, and then immediately search them out with Lucario's ability. Ordinary Rod lets you recover pieces of your Garchomp line and your basic fighting energy, which is important because you will often need the full 4 count of Garchomps, and possibly more, to see a game through to the end. A skateboard is there mostly for Jirachi, but it can also be attached to Lucario to make it a nice pivot. It's also useful for rescuing Garchomp if it gets paralyzed or put to sleep, but that is admittedly a pretty niche application. And finally, for the first time in this series, I can include a full count of my favorite energy card, Double Colorless Energy. It's exactly what it sounds like, and it makes the world go round. Specifically, it lets you pay for Garchomp's attacks fairly easily, but it is a precious resource and needs to be attached carefully. Do not attach this unless you are sure you're going to get an attack off shortly, because otherwise you're asking for it to get hit with a crushing hammer, or for the Pokemon you attached it to to be gusted and KO'd. And that's the deck in a nutshell. It's got some serious firepower, and with a bit of setup, it becomes terrifyingly consistent in the mid to late game. Once you have even a single Lucario established alongside your Garchomps, you can basically search out whatever you need every turn, which means that your opponent needs to hit so much more in order to secure their own ideal game state. And really, as long as you can maintain two Garchomps in play alongside a Lucario, you are probably on track to win the game. It's a beautiful engine that the designers put together for this theme deck, and now we can jump on over to the expanded ladder to see how smoothly it runs.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, it goes without saying that Garchomp can trade blows with the biggest threats out there. Seeing ADP or Eternatus during a deck boss laddering session is usually bad news, but our spunky land shark dragon thing managed to carry the day. Looking back at the games, I am pretty impressed at how the deck performed in the mid to late game, but honestly, it was painfully slow to get set up in both games, especially early on, and if my opponents had set up just a little bit quicker, I think coming back would have been nearly impossible. Not having two Gibble established on your first turn is usually a good sign that you're in for an uphill battle, because you're not only liable to lose your first evolution piece, but you're probably going to end up getting set back by an attachment as well. But oh boy, once you get Garchomp and Lucario on the field together, it's so easy to control the flow of the game. You get a guaranteed card every turn, which means your opponent can't rely on you whiffing a key combo piece. The added protection against things like Anne or Marnie is also greatly appreciated because it prevents your opponent from knocking you off tempo once you start chaining together KOs. And really, just being able to get guaranteed rare candies every turn is something every other Stage 2 deck would kill for. The Mock Strike theme deck is just so well designed, and I really have to credit the designers for the decision to synergize Garchomp and Lucario the way that they did. Like, this is how you make Stage 2's work. It has an interesting mechanic in its attack that allows it to keep up with multi-prizers, it can facilitate its own evolution, and you're rewarded into evolving into Garchomp thanks to Lucario. You can definitely tell that the designers looked back at this theme deck when they were designing the Leon Charizard deck that came out in Vivid Voltage. It's a similar kind of thing, and the Charizard, in a weird way, does both what Lucario and Garchomp do, kind of streamlining things, although I don't think it was quite as successful. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It was a real pleasure taking this deck for a spin, and I am sorry it took so long to get this episode out. I was unfortunately diagnosed with the coof, which meant that I spent quite a while laid out in bed, unable to record voiceover that I really needed to finish the episode. And it was a little tough just getting through the recording session now, so I'm sorry if uh, I sound a little rough as well. I had a lot planned for the YouTube channel, and now I'm a bit behind on my schedule, but luckily I was able to record a few pieces here and there for some upcoming episodes, so hopefully I'll be able to catch up again sooner rather than later. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. The channel recently passed the 250 subscriber milestone, and I was so sad that I couldn't celebrate it because of this stupid bug. But again, worry not, because I did order something very special, and I do plan on releasing a super special episode of Deck Boss to mark the occasion. And I guess to celebrate getting over my illness eventually as well. And that'll wrap it up for this week. I'm going to rest up for a little bit, and I should be back soon, in full force, with even more Deck Boss goodness. So until then, thanks for watching, and please, stay safe out there.